Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. It's the sixth day of the week, the 24th of July, the year of our Lord, 2015, 5775. I've been in communication with the young disciple recently, and, and uh, just now he sent me a message. And I just have to do this. I, I have to make this video for you, little brother, and also for those of you out there who might be struggling with the same thing. I'm going to expose the enemy a little bit to you in this video, and I want you to pause this video right now. I'm very serious. I want you to pause this video right now. And I want you to take a few moments to pray. I want you to ask the Lord to reveal these things to you in Jesus' name. And I want you to ask the Lord Jesus to surround you and protect you with his holy angels as you watch this video and as you take in this information. Because this is information that your enemy does not want you to have. Go ahead and do that right now. Okay, praise the Lord. Assuming that you have done that. Okay, and if you have not done so, it is not wise. Assuming that you have done that, I want to share with you a little something. The Bible speaks of Satan, of unclean spirits, of the Watchers, of Lucifer. All these terms are terms that people are greatly unfamiliar with in the churches. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in this video because there are epistles on the Sword of the Valiant website that deal with this subject, and there are videos on this channel that deal with these various subjects about the identity of these things. Lucifer is a man. Lucifer is not Satan. Lucifer is not the devil. Lucifer is a man. The scripture makes that very clear. And unfortunately, the denominations today have muddled that truth and caused people to think that Lucifer is the same thing as Satan. Um, there is an epistle on the website about that, and there's also videos on this channel about it. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me, and I will refer you to the, to the appropriate uh, materials so that you can discover that information from the scripture. Satan is an angel. Okay, Satan. The Bible says that Satan is the devil, that old serpent, and he is the deceiver. His, his name Satan means deceiver. Uh, the devil, that old serpent, the dragon. Uh, Revelation chapter 20 says that all these titles belong to that same entity. And Satan, <coughs> pardon me, is a particular individual. He also has legions that operate under his realm. Okay. Satan has a kingdom, just like Jesus Christ has a kingdom. And in that realm, there are angels, there are watchers, there are unclean spirits. What I want to talk to you about is the unclean spirits. Unclean spirits are, it is taught in the churches that unclean spirits are angels, and that the, the devil took a third of the angels out of heaven and rebelled against God and uh, that supposedly all this happened before Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That's a lie. That's not so. The scripture speaks in Revelation chapter 12 of a battle that is going to take place in the future. Um, and that is where people get that from. Satan has not been cast out of heaven yet, but he will be. And his angels that serve him will be cast out with him. And people believe that that which are called unclean spirits, or those which are called unclean spirits in the scripture, or that are called devils, are actually those angels that are with Satan operating in heavenly places. Okay. And if you have, at, at this point, I'm going to stop and say, if you're unclear about who Satan is and, and where Satan is right now, and the fact that Satan is not in hell, but that he's operating in high and heavenly places, and that he has uh, uh, principalities and powers of wickedness that work with him that are also angels, if you're not familiar with that, you're welcome to write to me, email me, and I'll send you the appropriate uh, materials that I've already prepared that will show you from the scripture that very truth. But what I want to talk to you about is who unclean spirits are. Okay, And what I have before me, before you right now, is a copy of the book of Enoch. And I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy of the book of Enoch, or it can be read online. In fact, there's videos of it on YouTube where it can be read to you online, where you can just uh, click play and, and do whatever you do around your house, and uh, the maker of that video who has blessed us will read the book of Enoch to you. I'm in the book of Enoch in the chapter 15, in, in the chapter, in chapter 15, and I'd like to share with you something about this, and, and very briefly I'm going to say that I know that this book isn't in the scripture, it isn't in the canon of scripture, as some would say, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not given by inspiration of God. And the fact that it's given by inspiration of God doesn't mean that it's absent from the scripture or that somebody took it out of the scripture. There's lots of things beside the Holy Bible that were written by the inspiration of God. I've written letters that were written by the inspiration of God. The thing that we need to remember is that when we read something outside of the scripture that claims to be given by inspiration of God, that claims to be prophecy, we need to judge it by the scripture 
and see from the testimony of Scripture, the Holy Bible, whether or not it is given by inspiration of God, whether or not it is prophecy. The Bible calls this judging prophecy. Okay, the Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14, if there be prophets, let two or three of them speak and let the others judge. This is because whenever prophecy comes forth in the church, we are commanded to judge it. And what that means is that we are commanded to hold it up in our minds against the Scripture and see if it is come from the Lord Jesus Christ our God or not. And we are able to discern that by knowing the Scripture. Praise the Lord. So this is the book of Enoch, and I believe that the book of Enoch was given by inspiration of God. I believe that it's true prophecy. I've read it more than once. And I'm going to share with you from the 15th chapter. Okay, and I'm going to start in verse 8. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. For those of you who don't know, there was a time, I'm not reading from the book of Enoch right now, I'm speaking on, on my own. For, for those of you who don't know, there was a time that was recorded in the scripture, Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and took to them wives of all which they chose. And of those daughters of men were born giants. They were mighty men of renown, mighty men of old. They were giants. Okay, they were giants on the earth because the angels took human wives and and the wife, and the women bare children unto them. Those children were giants because they were hybrid. They were the sons of men and angels. When I say men, I'm talking about females, women, and angels. They were giants. Okay, knowing that, let's continue. Enoch 15 verse 8. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. That is um, Enoch, the 15th chapter from verse 8 to verse 12. Okay. Now, I want to share with you something from the Holy Bible. This is in Matthew chapter 8. And let's see what verse do we want to start in. Verse 28, let's start in Matthew uh, chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come here to torment us before the time? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? This is what they said to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did they say this? Because they know that the time is coming when they will be delivered to be tormented. These are unclean spirits, evil spirits. They are the spirits of the giants who were men of renown that were begotten of angels and human women. And when the flesh killed, the bodies of them perished, but their spirits were left to wander through the earth. There are other evil spirits, other angels, that their dwelling place is in heaven, as the prophecy of Enoch said. And there are some whose dwelling place is in the earth. Let me read that passage for you again. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, listen to me, this is what they do, afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst. See, they are tormented, frustrated, hungry, and thirsty, but they take no food and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women. Against whom? Against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. 
May the Lord reveal even this unto you. These are the spirits that are on the earth that are called unclean spirits that Jesus cast out and that we Christians cast out. And Jesus cast them out with his word. And the people marveled at him and they said, what new doctrine is this that he cast out devils with his word and they obey him? And Jesus Christ said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Now listen to me. I'm going to tell you two things that are very important. Number one, as I mentioned in an earlier video today, you must know who you are. There were some men that we can read about in the 19th chapter of Acts who were casting out devils, and they were casting out devils in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. And they came across some devils who said to them, we know Paul and we know Jesus, but who are you? And the men had no sufficient answer, and they were miserably beaten and, and stripped naked and ran away wounded and bleeding because they didn't know who they were. You must know who you are. If you are in Jesus Christ, you must be baptized in his name, filled with the Spirit, and know who you are. And if you haven't been baptized in his name yet, that doesn't mean that you can't authoritatively cast out a devil or heal the sick in his name, but it means that you must seek to obey the gospel and that you must seek the first available opportunity that you have to be baptized in his name and, and, and get filled with the power of his Spirit and know who Jesus Christ is and know who you are in him, seated in heavenly places in him, as the scripture says. When you know Jesus Christ from the scripture, not from hearing me. Yes, hearing me preach is good and a right thing. But go to the scripture when you hear me preach and see that I have preached to you the word of God. Because from the scripture is where you're going to get your revelation. Remember the word of God says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Hearing comes by the word of God. Blessed be the name. Now, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 17. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when you know who you are. In Jesus Christ, when you're in Jesus Christ and you know who you are, you know who he is, and you know who you are, then the devils are afraid of you. They're already afraid of you because you're watching this video. They're already afraid of you because they've seen you open your Bible. They're already afraid of you because they know that you are taking hold of the light, and that's what they don't want you to do. Okay, why are they afraid? They're afraid because the time is coming when they will be delivered to torment. Salvation is not outstretched to them. The hand of God is not reaching out to them to offer them salvation. There is no salvation for them. They are condemned. And between now and the time that they shall be cast into the fire, they are wandering about throughout the earth. And they have no hope of ever being saved. They hunger and thirst. They are in fear. They are in darkness. And they afflict and oppress and torment the sons and daughters of men because that's where they came from and that's where they inherited the curse that they are living with right now. They are angry, despondent, depressed, sad, hopeless, tireless, hungry, thirsty, mean, angry, nasty beings. And they know that the time is coming when they shall be cast into torment. And they know that the one who is going to do that is Jesus Christ. And if you're seeking Jesus Christ and seeking to draw, draw nearer to him, they know that as the, the longer you do that, the more power you're going to have against them. And so they are afraid. And the more you draw near to Jesus Christ, the more fear is stricken into their hearts and the more they are going to try to discourage you. And you need to understand this, little brother, not only you who I'm talking to, but all those out there who are my brothers and sisters, no matter what level you are in seeking and serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to understand this. They are afraid. That's why they do what they do. We live in a world today in which the global mafia is using terrorism to, to, to execute their means of, 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 of implementing total control over the world. Terrorism. Because terrorism strikes fear into the hearts of people. Terrorism is a tool that is used by criminals to strike fear into the hearts of their victims to weaken and debilitate their victims so that they are more easily overcome. Did you hear what I just said? Terrorism is a device used by criminals to inflict fear into their victims, to debilitate and weaken their victims so that they are more easily overcome. That's what these spirits are doing. You must learn who Jesus Christ is. You must learn who these spirits are, where they came from, where they are going, and why they do the things that they do. And you must know in Jesus Christ's name that you have authority over them, because they know that. They know that. 
You see, when you enter into a court of law, into the into the law merchant system, the United States Corporation, and you stand there in a court of law, they speak an entirely different language than you do. And they know that if you knew their language, that you would speak their language and you would defeat them and you would walk away victorious. But you don't know their language. And they operate in such a way that they don't reveal their language to you so that you don't know that they are stealing from you and robbing you blind and casting you into prison when you have committed no actual valid crime. See, the same thing is happening in the courtroom because the same thing is happening in the spirit. The devils don't want you to know who they are. They don't want you to know why they do the things that they do. They don't want you to know, most of all, they don't want you to know who Jesus Christ is or the way of salvation. And the closer you get to him, the more that they're going to try tirelessly to keep you from doing that. You need to understand that these are as bullies. These are creatures that are physically stronger than you, Okay. Without Jesus Christ, you would have no hope of fighting against them. They're physically stronger than you. They are intellectually superior to you. But they are not physically stronger than the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are not intellectually superior to the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ or to the testimony of his word. And when you will get in his word, obey his gospel, get filled with the spirit and baptized in his name, and stand against those devils and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him. I command you to come out of her. I command you to be silent. In the name of Jesus Christ, get thee behind me, for it is written. They know. They know who Jesus Christ is. They know the power of the word of God. They don't want you to know that. That's why they're doing what they're doing. You see? So two things, as I said earlier in this video. Number one, you must know who you are in Jesus Christ. Because if you come against them in Jesus' name and you don't know who you are, you will be as those men in the 19th chapter of Acts who were defeated by them. You have to know who you are. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it doesn't mean that you have to know everything today. It means that you have to get in his word today and begin to learn of him. And as you begin to learn of him, he will fill you with revelation and understanding. And number two, once you know who you are, you must come against those spirits with the authority of the name of the almighty God of heaven and earth. You know, it is written in the scripture that Jesus Christ descended into the lower parts of the earth and then ascended up into the highest parts of heaven that he might be Lord of all. And every knee shall bow of that which is in heaven and that which is in the earth and that which is under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in whom dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, is Lord of all, everything in heaven and in earth and under the earth. That includes everything that exists, my friends, my brethren, my brothers and sisters, little children. That includes everything in existence, everything in the universe, everything that man has seen and everything that man has not seen. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And those spirits that are tormenting you, they know this. And they know that once you get a hold of his name and the revelation of who he is and the revelation of who they are, that they will be subject to you and that they will not be able to torment you anymore and that they will also not be able to torment other people in your path because you will cast them out in Jesus' name. They know this. So number one, you must know who you are. And number two, you must take the authority that is given you by the name of Jesus Christ to cast them out, to, to silence them, to, to put them under subjection and to let them know that they will not torment you and that they will not torment those under whose ministry, under under your ministry, I should say, under the ministry that you have. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, the 70 that Jesus sent out, they came to him and they said one day, and this is in the 10th chapter of Luke, verse 17, they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Subject unto us. What does that mean? Subject. What does that mean when you have a subject? When a king is on his throne, he has subjects. The king says, Bring me the, the cupbearer. The cupbearer comes. The king says, send him out of my sight. He is sent out of his sight. The king says, go to war against that country. His soldiers go to war against that country. Why? Because they're his subjects. Because he says it and they do it. There was a man who came to Jesus Christ to pray for his son. And the man said to Jesus, he said, I'm not even worthy that thou shouldest come into my house. But I'll tell you what, Lord, I am a man under authority. I'm a military man. I'm a man under authority, and I know about authority. And when I say to this man, go, he goes. And when I say to another man, come, he comes. And I know that all you have to do is say the word, and my son shall be healed. And Jesus marveled at his faith, and he said, go your way, your son is healed. And the man believed him, and he went his way. And guess what? His son was healed. 
This is authority. Subjection. If you are in Jesus Christ, if you're outside of Jesus Christ, those devils will kick your butt all throughout the day. But if you're in Jesus Christ, they, will, they, they have no authority to touch you. They have no authority to torment you. They have no authority to lie to you. They have no authority to do anything to you. They have no authority to be anywhere near you. If you're in Jesus Christ and you exercise the authority that he has given you in his name. I give you this in the name of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you that the spirits that I'm talking about in this video do not want you to understand this. And I don't want you to take the words that I've spoken to you in this video and go make war against the enemy. I want you to look in the scripture to seek God about this and to get the power from him, the authority and the revelation from him to verify, to get verification from him that what I've told you is true. That's what I want you to do. Because if you take the word that I've given you right now, without searching the scripture, and you go out and start seeking out devils, start, start, go out and start devil hunting, they're going to run all over you, just like they did to those men, the sons of Siva, in the 19th chapter of Acts. Okay? What I've given you is not the armor that you need. What I've given you is the place where you can get that armor and where you can put it on. That's what I've given you. Be very careful. The, 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 the battlefield that you're standing in and the battle that you're about to engage in is very real, my friend. It is not imaginary. It is not mythical. It is as real as guns, tanks, and bombers. And it is as capable of destroying you as any natural weapon is. Okay? I'm not saying this to put fear into your mind, to put fear of Satan into your mind. I'm saying this to put the fear of God into your heart and to let you know that this is very serious. Okay? Do not slander your enemy. Do not underestimate your enemy. Do not go out into the battlefield boasting yourself and, and, as if you were some great thing and looking for trouble. Because if, that, if you do that, you will find it. But on this battlefield, when you are doing righteousness and you are filled with the knowledge of the truth and the spirit of the truth, you have upon your, your, your breast the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. And you not only are girded with that armor, but you have the understanding of how to wield it and how to use it. Then you don't go out looking for trouble, but you go across the battlefield looking to save those that are, that are captive. And when someone comes against you to try to stop you from doing that, you lift up your weaponry <clears throat> and you defend yourself and you defend those who cannot defend themselves. That's what this weaponry is for. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's just as if you were a child and you were taking a karate class and the karate instructor would tell you, I'm not, a, I'm not encouraging you to take karate because the martial arts are not for us as Christians. But this is a martial art, spiritual warfare. This is a martial art. <clears throat> Pardon me. And it's just like when you were a kid and you took karate class, the instructor would tell you, first thing, I'm going to teach you how to fight. But it's not so that you can go out and cause trouble. It's so that you can walk in peace and defend yourself if necessary and defend someone else if necessary. That's the same reason that I tell you these things. Okay? Devils are real. They are real. Okay? And they are exactly as I described them to you in this video. Do not go out looking for trouble. But be prepared by the things that I've told you so that you can go seek God in his word and find out that these things are truth and get revelation from him. And walk stalwart. Walk as a soldier. Walk without fear of the enemy. Walk with respect. Not slandering your enemy. This is not a game. This is not a name-calling match. This is war. Walk stalwart. Walk as a man of God. Walk as a soldier. Walk as a prince or a princess if you're a female. Conduct yourself with grace, for the Bible says that God has given us grace for grace. It says of his fullness of all we received, and grace for grace. Which means that if you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the grace of God is upon you to enable to walk with grace as a prince or as a princess. And fight this battle with the weapons that the Lord Jesus Christ has given you. And this is what Paul meant when he said, be strong in the power of his might. Be strong in the power of his might. I give you this message in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, I say to you, these things are very serious. Do not take this lightly. Don't go jump out into the battlefield like a little child to get into a name-calling match with the devil. Because I testify to you of the truth, and I know from experience that he will run you over. It's not what this is about. This is about you walking in righteousness 
and being prepared to defend yourself in the spirit and to defend others in the spirit as you carry forth the ministry which the Lord has given you. And I give you these things in Jesus' name. And I'm here for you if you have questions for me. Amen.